Good morning, Grade 5. Welcome back to Grade 5 Mathematics class. How are you all doing today? Today, let's start a new chapter, Chapter 9, Perimeter and Area. You might have heard these terms before. Now, let's move into the chapter with an example. Imagine I bought a piece of land and it has the shape of a rectangle like this one here. See, let this be that piece of land. Now, I want to build a fence around this, a fence along the boundary of this land. For that, I need to know what is the length of this boundary, right? And which is the boundary? See, this is the boundary of this rectangular piece of land. So, the length of this boundary, that is called the perimeter. So, what is perimeter? Perimeter is the length of the boundary of a closed figure. See, this is a closed figure. It's not an open, it's a closed one. And the length of the boundary. This is the boundary. The length of the boundary is called its perimeter. And what about the perimeter of other geometrical figures or other kind of shapes? See, for figures with straight sides, such as a triangle, a rectangle, a square or a polygon. The perimeter is the sum of all its lengths. So, let's do one activity here. So, we learned the perimeter is the length of its boundary and for figures with straight sides, the perimeter will be equal to the sum of all its lengths of the sides. Now, here there is one question. This is from the let's recall page in your textbook page number 138 find the perimeter of the following figures see the first one you have got a square here and it has got straight sides and for a square all the sides are of the same length and what is the length of each side here it is 3 cm long so the square has a side of 3 cm now let's find out the perimeter of the square so by definition, the perimeter should be the sum of the lengths of all its sides, right? So here each side is 3 cm. So the perimeter for question A will be 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. The sum of all its sides. And what is it? 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9 plus 3 is 12. And the measurements are given in terms of centimeters. So, which is the unit that we should use here? It should be centimeters. So, the perimeter of this square is equal to 12 centimeters. Clear? Let's see the next one. Question B. So, question B here we have a figure with straight sides. And the measurement of each side are given in terms of centimeters. Now, let's find out the perimeter of this one. Just add the length of all its sides. So let's add that. For question B, the perimeter will be equal to, this side is 2 cm. So let's start from here. 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4. Then again plus this 2. And we come back to the starting point. So just add the length of all its sides. That's What is the perimeter then? 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 2 is 8 plus 2 10 plus 4 14 plus 2 16 centimeter so for question b the perimeter is equal to 16 centimeters clear now let's see question c there also we have one figure with straight sides what is the perimeter of this one let's see the measurement of each side and the measurements are given in terms of centimeters see Let's start from here. This side is 1 cm long. This side is 2 cm long. So starting from here, the perimeter would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 5. So what is the perimeter? 1 plus 2, 3. 3 plus 3, 6. 6 plus 1, 7. 7 plus 3, 10. 10 plus 2, 12. Plus 1, 13. 13 plus 5. 18 centimeters. So the perimeter for this figure is equal to 18 centimeters. Hope you are clear with this now. Now, see this is our example 
So this was a rectangular figure and you see there is some space which is enclosed within this figure. So this space, this amount of space is called its area. So what is area? Area is the amount of space occupied by a closed figure. And how do you represent area? Area is expressed in terms of square units. If the dimensions are expressed in terms of millimeters, the area will be expressed in terms of square millimeters or it can also be written as millimeter square a 2 as a superscript written to the right side. Now if the dimensions are in terms of centimeters, the area will be expressed in terms of square centimeters or you can also write that as centimeter square. Now see to find out the area of smaller figures we can use a square grid. You see a square grid here and each of these squares has a dimension of one centimeter. So such a square is also called a unit square. So a unit square is a square which has the side one centimeter. Here are some examples given. This is also from the Let's Recall page, page number 139. See, there are a few figures given here and each of these figures are represented on this square grid. We are asked to find out the approximate area of the following figures. So the question is, find the approximate area of the following figures if each square has a side of 1 cm. So, how do you find out the area of such small figures from a square grid? See, the first figure, we can see a triangle here and we can see it has enclosed a few complete squares and it has also enclosed a few squares in half. But look at this figure. In this figure, a few complete squares are enclosed by this figure, whereas a few squares which are covered more than half and then there are squares which are covered less than half. So how do you find out the area of figures from a square grid? For that, if your figure is given in a square grid, first you have to count the number of complete squares which are enclosed by the figure. Now if the figure encloses a square more than by half, you have to count that as one square. If it is half, if it is enclosed just half, you have to count that as half. If it is covered only less than half, then you don't count that. Now let's see how to find area here. So the first one, there is a triangle. See the number of complete squares are 1, 2. And remember, since each of these squares has a side of 1 cm each, the area covered by each square will be 1 square cm or 1 cm square. How do you write that? 1 cm square or 1 square cm. Now, let's find out the area of the first figure. So, in the first figure, how many complete squares are covered? 1, 2. There are 2 complete squares. Let's take that plus the half squares. The squares which are covered in half by this figure. So how many halves are there? Here 2 halves. 2 halves make 1. Here also 2 halves and 2 halves make 1. So 1 plus 1, 2. So let's add that to the number of complete squares. So 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and hence the approximate area for this figure is equal to 4 square centimeters or 4 centimeter square. Clear? Now let's see this example. Here only complete squares are covered by this figure. So let's count the number of complete squares. It would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So what is the approximate area for this figure? It is equal to 9 centimeter square or 9 square centimeters. Now what about question B? Here also only complete squares are covered by this figure. Let's count the number of complete squares 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this would be having an approximate area of 6 square centimeter or 6 centimeter square. Now question F. You see this figure here and in this figure complete squares are enclosed and certain squares are enclosed by more than half. 
and there are squares which are covered only less than half. So you do not have to count the squares which are covered less than half. Now for squares which are covered more than half you have to count as 1. So let's do the counting. So this would be, this is covered in more than half. So let's take that as 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And see these two squares are covered only by less than half. So let's omit that. So here the approximate area would be 8 centimeters square or 8 square centimeters. Now you can complete the other four questions in the same way. Just count the number of squares and then you can write the approximate area for the given figures. So this method is applicable only in the case of smaller figures which we can represent in a square grid. Now what if we have to find out the area of a large figure or a large space? So to find out or to measure the area of larger spaces or bigger figures, we have some formulae which can be applied. And for different types of geometrical figures, we have different geometrical formulae. For example, a square. How do you find out the area of a square? If it is a small square, maybe we can represent that on a square grid and find. Now what if we have to find out the area of a large square, like that of a square room? Let's apply a formula there. Now what is the speciality of a square? For a square, all its sides are of the same length. For example, if a square has side A, all its sides will be A. To find out the area of a square, the formula is side into side square units. For example, if A is the side of a square, the area A would be equal to A into A square units. If it is centimeter, if it would be square centimeters or centimeters square. If it is millimeters, it would be square millimeters or millimeter square. So A into A. See we have learned about square numbers when we learned number patterns. So if a number is multiplied by itself, it's called the resulting answer is called the square of the given number, right? For example, if 3 is given, its square will be 3 into 3 which is 9. So when you write A into A, you are actually finding a square, the square of A. So you can write A into A is equal to A square. So the formula to find out the area of a square A is equal to A square where A is the side of the square. Let's see that with an example. So you have a square here which has got the side 5 cm. The area of the square is equal to side into side square units. Here the side is 5 cm. So the area is 5 into 5 square cm. And what is 5 into 5? Or what is the square of 5? It is 25. So the area of this square is equal to 25 square cm. I hope you are clear with this. Now, so this was an example which showed how to find out the area of a square. Similarly, as we move more into this chapter, we'll learn different formulae to find out the perimeter and area of different geometrical figures. So today, you just go through the Let's Recall page, which is in page number 138 and 139. You also have to complete the question 2, C, 2D, 2G and 2H of the Let's Recall exercise number 2. Then below that you can see a heading maths around us. Please go through that as well and do accordingly. So that's all for today children. We'll meet in the next class with a new topic. Till then, bye.